Hello and welcome to You Can Write a Song. I'm your host, Ryan Day. And of course, it's always a blessing to have you joining us. You've taken time out of your busy day to tune into this special program in which we have one of the greatest gospel songwriters of all time, Mr. Lanny Wolf, who is going to be taking us through another major important aspect of songwriting. And Lanny, I have to say, I'm locked and loaded. I'm ready to take notes. And uh, I know you're going to have a special program. Just give, give us a hook, kind of lure us into what it is you're going to be sharing with us today. Well, this is so exciting to me because songs come from someplace. Mm -hmm. And people always ask me, where did you get the idea for that song? Right. So in this session today, we're going to be talking about all the places, all the ways that ideas for songs come to Lanny Wolf. And I get excited when I just think about all the ways that God has done that in my songwriting. Mm, praise the Lord. Well, I'm excited about this because I'm not a songwriter. Um, but You're a according great to, singer uh, that <laughs> sings sing, the songs. But according to this show, according to this particular program, you, you've called it, you can write a song. I'm convinced that I can. Yes. And I'm excited uh, to jump right into this and to learn exactly how we can receive inspiration in writing powerful gospel songs or any type of song that may inspire you. So stay tuned, get your notepads, get your pens, your pencils, get ready to take some notes as Lenny takes us through on how we also can write a song. In this session of You Can Write a Song, I would like to answer the question, where do I get ideas for songs from? Psalms 37, 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And in one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord declares, for I know the plans that I have for you. So, as a child of God and a gospel songwriter, I believe that I get divine inspiration from being at God's right place at the right time with the right frame of mind. So I get ideas for songs from anything I see, anything I hear, anything I feel. Let me first start with the Department of Homeland Security's tagline, if you see something, say something. But if you're a songwriter, if you see something, write something. Seeing would include anything I read from books, which could be fictional, non-fictional, devotionals, etc. Books that sell millions of copies are successful because their writers have what I call a way with words. I have a handful of inspirational writers that have the ability to put on paper their heart, insight, illustrations, and anointed writing expertise to provide readers with a fresh spiritual inspiration. One of many of these writers' literary techniques and a favorite of mine is alliteration. Alliteration is the repeating of consecutive words, all starting with the same letter, as in the title of one of my Christmas songs, A Season, A Savior, A Star. The inspiration for the song Precious Lamb of God came from a chapter in one of these inspirational books as soon as I read the first sentence of a chapter, I had a light bulb moment and knew that I had to incorporate this writer's idea into a song. The challenge was how to choose word pictures that would elicit the emotion of the reader to connect with the heart of Mary as she prayed this prayer over the baby Jesus. So I used an inspirational writer's idea, but filtered it through a songwriter's lens. My challenge, in a sense, was greater than his in writing a chapter for a book because I needed to put the song in 100 words, give or take, and to be concerned with rhyme, melody, and chords. Rest tiny hands Though you belong to a king you will hold no royal scepter or wear royal wreath, for your hands are reserved for a Roman cross instead loving hands to heal the sick the 
You are the precious Lamb of God is the chorus of that song. You are the precious Lamb of God. The Word became flesh to fulfill redemption's plan. Jesus, you are the precious Lamb of God. When it comes to books as a source of inspiration, the book, the Bible, the inspired Word of God is the best one. 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I had read this scripture so many times. I'd heard it quoted many times, but it wasn't until one special moment when the trio was on our way to church service. I was in the passenger seat and I pulled the Bible from the dashboard of the van and opened it to 1 John 4, 4, and the scripture just leaped out at me. It was what I call, as a songwriter, the moment of truth. So I wrote the chorus of this song in a matter of just minutes. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. Since the chorus was so simplistic, the verses needed to include a lot of details that would support the case for the one thought chorus. Verses would take a lot more time and tediousness of the craft to make the complete song everything it would need to be. The Downings recorder, Greater as He, making it number one on the gospel radio charts for weeks. It was in pitch to the Oral Roberts organization, became their official closing song for their telecast for six years. It was heard on 120 stations a week. So out of 700 plus songs God has given me, Greater as He has been one of the most popular. And to me, the irony is that even though I wrote the music to the chorus, I did not write the lyrics. The Apostle John did. So the song really was a co-write. And because John's words are public domain, because of when they were written, they are owned by the public and not an individual. The translation, I don't have to share any of the royalties with John. Matthew 2.10 states, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Like you, and I'd read this scripture many times, but it wasn't until I received a Christmas card from one of my students, Dan Dean of, of Phillips Craig and Dean, with this scripture that the words leaped off the card into my spirit in what became a moment of truth for me that ignited my writing pen to write, rejoice with exceeding great joy. The chorus is what I call a one thought chorus with lines one and three being the same and two and four almost identical. Listen. They rejoice with exceeding... I could just sing that forever. This song was one of the favorites in my first Christmas musical, Noel Jesus is Born, and is used yearly at Disney's Epcot Candle Lighting Service in Orlando, Florida. So, if you see something from billboards, signs, cards, any visual, write something. Wise Men Still Seek Him became a song for me, but it came from a bumper sticker. Only One Life came from a plaque on the wall of my grandmother's house. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. While on tour, the Lanningwell Trio would stop at Stuckey's, remember that? Fill up the Silver Eagle bus with gas and pecans. At one of these Stuckey pit stops, I passed by a revolving rack that had wooden plaques displayed. One caught my eye and it simply said, funny? how I keep falling in love with you over and over and over again. I pulled the plaque from the rack. I took her to the register, took out a dollar, paid for it. Well, I've gotten my money back on that transaction many, many times over. The chorus came so easily. And I just keep falling in love with you over and over and over and over again. I keep Falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets
gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Just keep falling in love with Him over and over and over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. And that becomes the hook in this song that hopefully stays in people's mind and keeps them wanting to sing it over and over again. Okay. It was my first time to visit the largest cathedral in the world, St. Peter's in Rome, Italy. It holds 96,000 people on the inside and on the basilica outside, 450,000 people. Can you imagine? The abs where the dome is located inside is two football fields in height. Michelangelo's masterpiece was filled with overpowering statues and massive marble columns that left me overwhelmed and speechless. The child in me couldn't help but wonder, how could heaven outdo this? But quicker than I could put the question mark on the question, the man inside of me reminded the child of the scripture, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. It was at that moment, standing in the middle of St. Peter's Cathedral, that God gave me this song, A Little Taste of Heaven. Heaven, I've had a little taste of heaven. I've had a little touch of heaven. I've had a little glimpse of heaven. Want to go where the milk and honey flow. No more sorrow, pain or woe. I've had a little taste of heaven and I want to go there. I want to go there. It happened at a Lanny Wolf Trio concert in Kingsport, Tennessee. Actually, uh, the bus broke down and we didn't get there till 10 to 9 and the people waited patiently for us to set up equipment and start the concert. So in the concert, we were singing an upbeat song and most of the audience was clapping along. As I looked out over the audience, I noticed a, a little lady clapping, but there was something different about how she was doing it. I looked more closely and realized that her right hand was clapping against her left elbow because she had no left hand to clap with. So she used what she had. After the concert was over, I got back on the bus. I couldn't help but write this song, I'm going to praise the Lord any way that I can. So I get great inspiration from greeting cards. Okay, I love to go to card shops and uh, look at cards. Card writers make great salaries for their skill in putting emotional phrases and ideas in a few words, hopefully, that connects with the person buying the card and the person receiving it. I love to spend time in card shops pursuing through cards, looking for any lines or phrases that get my attention. A few years back, I was looking for Christmas cards in a card shop. Notice that there were just a few that said, Merry Christmas. Many more said, Happy Holidays or Season's Greetings. I got riled up in my spirit. I went to the clerk and I was asking, why aren't there more cards that say Merry Christmas? His reply was simply that there was a growing social trend to do away with the word Christmas, can you believe it? And so the card companies were cooperating with that philosophy and putting cards on shelves that would play into the demand from the public. As I walked out of the card shop that day, I was more determined than ever to write songs about keeping the word Christmas in this favorite season of the year. I wrote the song, Keep Christ in Christmas, which became the centerpiece song of a Christmas musical I wrote called Jesus, the Heart of Christmas. Had I not been in the card shop that day, this song, or this musical would never have been written.
for show and tell from elementary school. Today I'm going to show you some cards that have caught my eye with some kind of inspiration for me to write a song, but I'm not telling you what the inspiration is, and I don't want you to steal my idea and write the song before I do. So uh, I want you to start spending your own time in your card shops looking for some special card that gives you some special moment of inspiration. I get inspiration from anything I hear. Sermons, conversations. In Cleveland, Tennessee, for a meeting with my publishing company, I was having breakfast at a restaurant in the hotel. At the table next to mine, I could hear some businessmen talking rather loudly. I wasn't trying to overhear the conversation, but they were so loud, it was hard for me to tune it out. I overheard one of the men say, and they made me an offer so good that I just couldn't turn it down. At that moment, I put my fork down, took out a pen and wrote on the napkin at my place setting, Jesus made me an offer so good that I just couldn't turn it down. I finished my breakfast as well as the course of this nugget of inspiration. Listen. Jesus made me an offer so good So I believe that I was sitting beside this particular table with loudmouth businessmen for a reason in God's divine economy. During a church service in Jackson, Mississippi, preacher gave a message which included this sentence, my house is full, but my field is empty. The contrast was so impactive, I scribbled the words down on a piece of paper and I completed the song within two weeks. Writing this song illustrates to me an important principle as a songwriter, and that's what I call the moment of truth or a light bulb moment. It wasn't until years later in a songwriting class that one of my students called my attention to the fact that nothing in this course rhymes. And I was shocked because I'm such a stickler for rhyme, but in reviewing it, God was so forcibly speaking to me that I just wrote what he told me. I get inspiration from when God speaks, of course. Wall Street heavyweight E.F. Hutton's advertising slogan, you remember it possibly, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. But to this songwriter, when God talks, I want to make sure I'm always listening. For six years while teaching at Gateway College in St. Louis, Missouri, every Monday night I would drive 20 miles to Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville, Illinois, working on a second master's degree, this one in music education. On one of these Monday nights, as I was walking from my class to my car through the student union, I heard over the PA system a song with a line in it, there's something in the air. I thought to myself, that tune sounds familiar. Where have I heard it? So from the student union, all during the 20 miles home, that phrase just kept playing over in my mind and it just started spinning out to, there's something in the air. I can feel it everywhere. So I asked friends of mine if they had ever heard this song, there's something in the air. And they all agreed no, but told me that the tune reminded them of Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. So it finally dawned on me that what was playing through the PA speaker, spe speaker sorry, in the student union was the Carpenter song, Rainy days and Mondays 
always get me down, but God was speaking to me with, there's something in the air. So I finished the song, the Lanny Wolf Trio recorded it and became the title song of our first project that was picked up by the Benson Company. Listen. Could it be that this would be the day that starts eternity, the day that we've been waiting for so long? Could it be that yet today the King of Kings will turn and say, pick up the trumpet, blow it loud and strong? Writing this song underscores to me being at the right place at the right time with the right frame of mind. I could have gone through the student union 15 minutes later and that particular cut would not have been playing and this song would never have been born. Her name, Loretta Bernard, she and her husband Elton, they spent 20 years as missionaries in Korea. She relays the story of a time when in Korea she was so sick that she couldn't even pray for herself. About a year later, when she was back in the States on furlough, she talked about her ordeal in a congregation in Michigan. After the service, a dear sister came up to Sister Bernard and asked her if she could remember generally the date when she was so sick. As Sister Bernard responded with a date, the woman said, that was the very day that God woke me up in the middle of the night and said, get out of bed and pray for Loretta Bernard. And the woman said, I heard and I got out of bed and I prayed for her. Upon hearing about this story, I was so deeply moved that I wrote this song, Someone is Praying for You. This song reminds me of many songs that God has given me that I categorize as no pain, no gain. Had Sister Bernard not been sick or even so sick that she couldn't pray for herself, this song would never have been born, but of equal significance. Had Sister Bernard not told her story in the States and had I not heard about it, likewise, this song again would never have been born. When God wants to speak, it's when he wants to speak and not necessarily at some right convenient time in our schedule. So if you want to be a songwriter, you need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Maybe God wants you to stop at Burger King today instead of McDonald's. Maybe he wants you to stand in the long line and not the short line because there's somebody that's going to be there behind you that's going to say something that he wants you to hear. I also get inspiration from anything I feel as a part of a crowd of some where close to 20,000 people at a general conference for a church, I was sitting there and I just felt. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Sitting in the congregation at Brooklyn Tabernacle in Brooklyn, New York, it was a divine feeling and I had to take pen and paper out and write, I feel heaven in this place. I feel heaven in this place. I feel heaven all around me in this place. As I returned to my seat at a CSAC banquet after receiving CSAC Songwriter of the Year for two years in a row, I just took out a pencil and wrote, Thank you, Lord, 
for giving your song to me. Some years back, I'd look for a car, a special kind of car, umpteen car lots. Finally saw it, and when I did, it's a wonderful feeling when you know you found what you've been looking for. Overcame with emotion. So I took this physical situation and wrote a spiritual song about that feeling. Your assignment, be on a spiritual alert to see something, to hear something, or to feel something that becomes a song. Go. Wow, I can't believe that we've already come to the end of this particular program, but I know there's probably, hopefully, many more to come. Lanny, I have to say, I was writing notes as you were going through that particular lecture, and it's just amazing how we can look and see that there's so many different aspects that we can gain inspiration in how to write a song. I made some notes here. What we see, it's important that we look out and watch for yes. the things, you know, inspiration from the Bible. I never would have thought billboards, looking for billboards and signs and architecture, as you told that wonderful story there, and greeting cards and anything that we hear and listen to, conversations, statements, sermons. Again, you want some inspiration? Start listening to the preacher preach. Because again, one of my favorite songs that I grew up singing, Lenny Will's songs was My House is Full. And to hear you tell that story about My House is Full, it just makes it so much more special. And of course, anything that we feel, sometimes we, we may feel a certain feeling and it may give us that inspiration to write a song. And so capture I'm it. just, exactly, capture that moment. I'm just so thankful uh, for this, uh, to be able to spend the time with you, to listen, to get into your head, to pick your brain on how we can write a song. Uh, we want to encourage you, again, uh, to take these things. Don't just you know, let them pass by because learning from the grace, learning from someone whom God has given a special gift is definitely special. Special indeed. So again, we thank you for joining us here on You Can Write a Song, and we hope that you again take that pen out, take that paper out, listen, watch, so that you also can indeed write a song. God bless. We'll see you next time. Just do it. <laughs>